Imagine a time of great conquests, ambitious leaders, and epic battles. Our story begins with a remarkable figure whose name echoes through the corridors of history, Kara Mustafa Pasha. Brace yourself as we uncover the captivating tale of this influential figure and his pivotal role in shaping the destiny of the Ottoman Empire. Welcome back to Turkic Tales, the channel that delves deep into the rich tapestry of Turkic history, exploring the extraordinary individuals who shaped the destiny of the Turkic people. Today, we embark on an enthralling journey through the life and legacy of Kara Mustafa Pasha, a brilliant strategist and influential figure during the 17th century Ottoman Empire. From his military prowess to his rise as Grand Vizier, Kara Mustafa Pasha's story is an integral part of the intricate web that weaves the history of the Turkic world. So, without further ado, let's begin. Mustafa was born in Avlonia, now Vlor in Albania, in 1592. He joined the Janissary Corps and became known for his archery skills. He climbed the ranks, serving as a deputy, and later as the Aga of the Janissaries. In 1635, he was appointed as the Grand Admiral of the Navy. Despite his naval position, he also participated in the capture of Baghdad, which was far from the sea. Although Mustafa was of Turkish origin, he was raised by the Koprulu family, who were of Albanian origin. His father served under Koprulu Mehmed Pasha, which led to Mustafa being introduced into the Koprulu household. There, he received education from Koprulu Mehmed Pasha and eventually married into the Koprulu family. Mustafa married a Koprulu princess, and although details are unclear, they had children together who unfortunately passed away at a young age. He had four concubines named Fatma, Emin, Ais, and Zeynep, with whom he had at least two sons named Yusuf and Mehmed. He adhered to Islamic customs by not wearing silk and avoided wearing silver or gold. Kara Mustafa Pasha was a figure who elicited diverse opinions from Europeans. Some perceived him as a person driven by greed, yet others found him to be humorous, enthusiastic, and uncompromising in his beliefs. While some labeled him as deceitful and desirous of wealth, he remained devoted to the Ottoman state. Europeans, particularly, harbored dislike for him due to the burdensome taxes he imposed. It is worth noting, though, that his reputation was not fixed and could vary based on political alliances and specific circumstances. Such diverse characterizations showcase the complexity and multifaceted nature of Kara Mustafa Pasha's personality. Mustafa served as the governor of Silistria in 1659 and acted as a deputy for his brother-in-law, the Grand Vizier Kopruluzade Fazil Ahmed Pasha. He negotiated a settlement with John Sobieski in 1676, adding the province of Podolia to the Ottoman Empire. He also led successful campaigns in Ukraine, establishing Ottoman garrisons in several cities and capturing the Cossack capital of Chaihirin. Kara Mustafa Pasha demonstrated his military leadership by commanding ground troops in a war against Poland. During this conflict, he engaged in negotiations with John Sobieski, a prominent Polish leader. Mustafa had a strategic goal in mind, transforming the Cossack regions in southern Ukraine into an Ottoman protectorate. By doing so, he aimed to strengthen the empire's influence and secure its interests in the area. His military prowess and diplomatic skills played crucial roles in shaping the outcome of these wars and negotiations. In the year 1676, Following the passing of Koprulu Fazil Ahmed Pasha, Kara Mustafa Pasha ascended to the esteemed position of Grand Vizier. This prestigious role held immense significance within the Ottoman Empire, as the Grand Vizier served as the highest-ranking political figure after the Sultan. Mustafa's appointment reflected the trust and confidence placed in his abilities as a statesman and administrator. As Grand Vizier, he assumed immense responsibilities, overseeing the governance of the empire and guiding its policies during a crucial period. Kara Mustafa Pasha led several military campaigns in Ukraine, aiming to fortify the position of the Cossack state. To achieve this objective, he strategically established Ottoman garrisons in various cities throughout Ukraine. These garrisons served as vital strongholds, 
consolidating the Ottoman presence and ensuring the empire's influence in the region. Furthermore, Mustafa's forces managed to recapture Chihiran, the historical capital of the Cossacks, which had previously fallen under Russian occupation. Through these campaigns, Mustafa demonstrated his military prowess and further solidified the Ottoman Empire's hold over Ukrainian territories. In the year 1683, Kara Mustafa Pasha embarked on a momentous campaign with the objective of expanding the Ottoman Empire's territories. With a formidable force of 100,000 soldiers, Mustafa set his sights on Vienna, the capital of Austria. This ambitious endeavor followed a prolonged period of more than 150 years of intermittent conflict between the Ottoman Empire and its European adversaries. By mid-July, the Ottoman army had encircled Vienna, which was defended by a modest garrison of 10,000 Habsburg soldiers. Mustafa's siege of the city mirrored the actions of the legendary Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, who had also attempted to capture Vienna in 1529. The Ottoman forces launched relentless assaults on the city's fortifications, gradually gaining ground and breaching a portion of the walls. Victory seemed within their grasp, and Mustafa appeared poised to achieve his grand ambition. However, on the 12th of September, 1683, the course of history took an unexpected turn. King John III Sobieski of Poland, sensing a critical opportunity, led a resolute Polish army to Vienna's aid. Exploiting the dissent and disarray within the Ottoman military command and leveraging the unfavorable positioning of Mustafa's troops, Sobieski devised a masterful strategy. During the Battle of Vienna, Sobieski's renowned Polish-winged hussars executed a swift and devastating flank attack. Their thunderous charge struck the Ottoman lines with unparalleled ferocity, causing chaos and confusion among Mustafa's forces. The Habsburg soldiers, reinforced by the Polish cavalry, fought valiantly alongside Sobieski's troops. The combined strength of the Holy League allies, consisting of the Habsburgs and other European powers, proved to be overwhelming for the Ottoman army. The tide of the battle swiftly turned in favor of the defenders. The Ottoman forces, caught off guard and lacking coordination, faced a crushing defeat. With their aspirations of capturing Vienna shattered, they were forced to retreat back into Hungarian territories. The consequences of this pivotal battle would reverberate far beyond the battlefield. The defeat at Vienna proved to be a decisive turning point in Kara Mustafa Pasha's life and the fate of the Ottoman Empire. It marked the end of his illustrious career and brought about a tragic end. Mustafa's failure was deemed unacceptable and the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed IV ordered his execution. As the year came to an end on December 25, 1683, a solemn and heartbreaking event took place in Belgrade. It marked the tragic conclusion of Kara Mustafa Pasha's life, a once powerful figure who had commanded armies and held great authority. At the order of Mehmed IV, Mustafa faced a grim fate. The execution took place in a manner befitting his high rank within the Ottoman Empire. He was strangled with a silk cord, a method reserved for individuals of his stature. In his final moments, as the cord tightened around his neck, Mustafa's resignation was palpable. Accepting his destiny, he uttered his last words, wrestling with the consequences of his actions and the hands of fate. With a mix of vulnerability and acceptance, he posed a poignant question, am I to die? Ultimately, he surrendered to the higher power, stating, as God pleases. The foundation of Mirzifonlu Kara Mustafa Pasha is among the most influential foundations in the Ottoman Empire and Turkey. Managed by his descendants, including notable figures like Ahmed Asim Bey and Mehmed Nebel Bey, known as Mirzifonlu Kara Mustafa Oglu, it upheld his legacy. The renowned painter Yilmaz Mirzifonlu led the foundation until 1976. Kara Mustafa Pasha's legacy in modern Turkey evokes a range of perspectives. Historians present differing views, depicting him as either a skilled tactician or a reckless commander. However, one notable figure who held a sympathetic view of Kara Mustafa Pasha was Kemal Atatürk, the revered founding father of modern Turkey. To honor Kara Mustafa Pasha's historical significance, 
His birthplace in the Mirzifan district was renamed Kara Mustafa Pasa. This renaming serves as a lasting tribute, preserving his name and legacy in the fabric of present-day Turkey. It stands as a reminder of the important role he played in history, leaving an indelible mark on the local landscape. Thank you for watching this video on Kara Mustafa Pasha's intriguing life. Stay tuned for more captivating historical adventures on Turkic tales. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. See you soon.